Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com, and this month I'll be covering oscillator design. I'll be implementing some interesting oscillators in Reactor, and today I'll start with the VoSim oscillator. VoSim stands for Voice Simulation, and it sounds a little like this. All right, so let's begin with a new ensemble, and I'll create a new macro with some of the basic inputs that primary oscillators usually come with, such as pitch and amplitude, and I'll add a sync input as well. Most oscillators share a common design. They use a phase counter to determine the phase of the oscillator. And once you have that, you can do some math depending on the type of oscillator to calculate the output of the oscillator. So in primary, a really easy way to mimic a phase counter is to use a copy of the ramp oscillator. So the output of the ramp oscillator is going to be the phase of our oscillator. And so the phase can be restarted whenever we receive a sync input. And the, we want the phase counter to run at the same frequency as the oscillator itself. So we'll take the incoming frequency, uh, pitch and translate it to a frequency using the exponential f module which you can find in the math menu and we want the ramp oscillator to have a amplitude that's determined by the type of oscillator that we're making uh, for a vosim oscillator we can simply have a phase that counts from 0 to 1 so we can give the ramp oscillator a value of 1 all right so everything from here on out is going to be the code of the oscillator itself. And basically we're going to take the incoming phase and multiply it by a value called the formant value, which is going to have a range of at least two. Um, I don't know what the maximum supposed limit is. It gets more and more distorted the higher the value is. I'll just use 16 um, as an example, which is probably excessive actually. And one thing you always want to make sure of when you have a knob controlling an audio signal is to insert an audio smoother between the knob and the audio signal itself. Um, failing to do so can give you an effect where you get some really bad audio clipping whenever you turn the knob. So if a knob is causing clicking in a reactor ensemble, it's at least 75% likely to uh, be a missing audio smoother somewhere. We've taken our incoming phase from 0 to 1 and we're multiplying it by a value from 2 to 16. Um, so the output of this multiplication can be um, a value anywhere from 0 to 16. The next thing we're going to do is use a clipper and shear off any values over 1. So just set the maximum limit to 1. So this is basically going to give us a value that counts from 0 to 1 and then stays at the value of 1 for some length of time determined by the position of the formant knob. Next we can take the sine of our clipped value. The sine module in Reactor takes a value from 0 to 1 um, as the full cycle of a sine wave, whereas normally you might expect a sine wave to accept values from negative pi to pi. So this is a little bizarre, it's kind of a strange implementation, but it actually works in our favor because it means we have less math to do here. So once we have the sine of our input, we square the sine value and this will give us our basic waveform. And now we just need to translate it depending on the value of the formant knob. 
So we can first subtract 1 over the formant value. And this will help eliminate any DC bias that is caused by the multiplication and the clipper. Probably really by the clipper, actually. And next, we want to multiply the output by another value because our output is changing in amplitude depending on the value of our formant. So we want to multiply by the formant value raised to the 0.5 power. So we can create an x to the y module, set y to 0.5. Um, take our power, and again we want to translate anything coming from the format knob into an audio signal. And it's best to um, do the exponent before the um, audio smoother. That way we can calculate the exponent at event rate instead of calculating at audio rate, which is really wasteful with your CPU. All right, so that's our VoSim oscillator. We simply want to multiply our product by the amplitude of the oscillator that the user has set, and we can send that value directly to our output. Um, so creating a basic setup here, I'm just going to use a simple note pitch for the pitch, and I'll control the amplitude using an AR envelope just to um, stop any clicks that might happen on a new gate. And then we can sync it to a new gate as well. And we have our basic VoSim setup. I really like to use a macro I did a quick tips video on recently. Um, it's just a simple oscilloscope that shows you one cycle of a waveform. It's really great for testing oscillators like this, just getting an idea of what's going on so you can see what you're making. And um, once we give it something to show, the scope will tell you what the waveform looks like. All right, so that's a basic VoSim oscillator. Next, I want to show how we can add phase modulation. And this technique will work for many oscillator types, not all, but many. So basically, to add phase modulation, simply separate out your phase counter code and add a value to it. Um, that's pretty much it. Once we've done that, uh, we need to make sure that our phase output is still within the range that we've specified. So in this case, we need, after the add module, we need our output to be within the range from 0 to 1. Um, in order to do this, we can use a modulo. If we modulo by 1 and take the modulo output, um, we're basically dividing over 1 and taking the remainder. So if our add goes over 1, say we end up with a value of 1.2, um, the output of our mod is simply going to be 0.2. Um, so the sort of signal we want to send to the phase mod input is going to be an oscillator of some type. It's best to use an oscillator with little or no harmonics, such as a sine. Um, sawtooths and square waves will create really nasty aliasing here, so it's best not to use those. So using a sine sync oscillator as an example, um, we want to reset the oscillator at the beginning of a new gate, just like our VoSim is being reset. Um, we can choose a pitch value that is related to the incoming note pitch, and we want to make sure that our amplitude can be 
affected as well. So we want to send a relatively small value into the phase modulation input. The larger it is, the more likely we're going to end up with an aliased signal. This basic setup here should give a pretty wide range of possible sounds. And let's just give it a quick test run on the panel view. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com.